The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, finally appeared before the Special Committee investigating the fuel subsidy regime. She revealed that the federal government pays 282 naira on every litre of premium motor spirit imported into the country. She says the landing cost of every litre of petrol is 448 naira and the country pays 18.39 billion naira every day a subsidy. But members of the committee are not entirely impressed with this disclosure from the minister and they also question the rationale behind the use of petroleum profit tax of the NMPC to pay subsidy. The major issue, whether the minister will agree with this honorable committee, is the issue of subsidy that has become a household name in Nigeria. Of concern of recent the Honorable Minister's remark some time ago, on an occasion where the Honorable Minister stated that the country would be requiring a colossal sum of 6.7 trillion over for subsidy in 2023. The National Assembly, being a major stakeholder, feels <coughs> this figure is worrisome knowing fully that the country has to resolve to borrowing to finance um, some of the previous budgets. So the Honorable Minister, in the same region and uh, conscious of her role as the manager of the country's resources, or the custodian of the country's resources, um, is called open by this Honorable Committee to give her statement and submissions that will guide the work of this committee. If the nation holds on to full subsidy as it is designed now, we will be incurring from January to December a subsidy cost of 6.4 trillion. But we suggested to the Federal Executive Council and Council approved that maybe we could look at the option of exiting the subsidy half year. So if we did that, then the cost will be 3.3 trillion, which is 3.35 trillion, which is half of the 6.7. The Federal Executive Council approved the second option, so that is the option that was conveyed by His Excellency the President to the National Assembly. But let me also say that even though this is a reduced option, it will mean that we are borrowing more than we will have borrowed if we didn't have a uh, full subsidy. In 2022, we are carrying the cost of subsidy throughout the whole year. I recall that the initial MTEF and approval by the Parliament was for us to exit subsidy by June of this year. But during the course of the year, making assessment of the, uh, the, the difficulty, the difficult fiscal challenge in the economy and the hardship that our citizens were bearing due to high inflation and other challenges, we were asked to resubmit our uh, plans and review them to include provision for full subsidy throughout the year 2022. That's how come we came back to Parliament with an uh, incremental expense from 443 billion, which we had planned, to up to 4 trillion Naira subsidy expense in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in 2022. This situation is is not desirable and it is not sustainable. It is putting the country in very serious, dire financial situation and we do hope that we will be able to exit this subsidy uh, regime very, uh, in, in the shortest possible, possible time. And the Chartered Institute of Treasury Management has called on the National Assembly to give legislative backing to the Treasury single account. The registrar of the institute says the back end of the TSA should be secured and other loopholes blocked to prevent waste and corruption. Along the line, the TSA by 2015, as it is, became a full-blown operation. Is that not so? And despite the challenges you still have in the economy, it has actually reduced a whole lot of things. Of course, we know that we, as an institute research-based and having global affiliation, will be able to assist the government continuously to see what they can actually do to assist in this area. I'll see plug the small leakages here and there to be able to build a holistic um, 
association, our organization, and um, by extension, the country. So, what do we intend to do? Our members have been certified, they have been assisted as it is to get hands on knowledge and experiences on how to manage resources in their respective organizations. Not just to manage, they need to grow it too. Because these days, you have to grow your cash base, make sure your investment templates are in place, assist your organizations to be able to add value so that all those that qualify for the institutes will be able to act as professionals in their stead. So all those core functions and every other thing are listed here. The National Assembly is a busy place. As the bastion of democracy, it is a place where bills are presented, motions debated, laws made, and the yearnings of the people are laid bare. Come with us as we take you through the workings of the National Assembly. We take you through plenary, committee meetings, and probes, all to ensure smooth working of the democratic process. Joining me now on the program is Honorable Garba Dati from Kaduna State. He is the Chairman, House Committee on Ports. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Thank you. Let's start with insecurity. Your state also has experienced a fair share of heat. What really is the lasting solution? Well, I think uh, we can approach it from different perspectives. For immediate solution, to me, we have no option for now than to engage the private military contractors, either from South Africa or from anywhere that can solve this problem for us. Uh, at least uh, we have seen they are being used in other places, in conflict in Sierra Leone, in Darfur, in Mozambique, and Central African Republic. Even currently, what is happening in uh, Mali, uh, which has a lot, of common, a lot in common with Nigeria and other Sahelian regions. Uh, if you could recall, just recently, Mali employed the services of uh, private military contractors from Russia to deal with this menace of insecurity. I think for now, for immediate solution, we need them. And uh, the second issue is to equip our armed forces with modern equipment that they can take the bandits' heads on. You know, Nigerian army, a gallant army, they have fought in different countries of the world and they did very well. So I'm sure with the right attitude, with, with weapons, with technology, uh, as a long-term solution, but for immediate solution now, we need the services of these private military contractors. We have seen how effective they have been in other parts of the world where they have been contracted. It's just like any other company doing business in Nigeria. Uh, we have we even employ foreign coach to train our teams. Uh, now Kaduna Abuja we is being constructed by Julius Berger. It's a foreign company. So to me, to me for now, we can employ the foreign private contractors. Even the war that is fought in Russia today between Ukraine and Russia, uh, all of them are using private contractors. So I think it's not a bad idea uh, if you can use them to achieve peace in Nigeria. I think it's worth doing because uh, peace and security is the most important thing in governance. Thank you, sir. And how do we deal with the challenge of fifth columnist in the security architecture? 
Well, uh, that's why I said for now, we need to engage these uh, private military contractors because we we'll do it on terms and agreements. But uh, field colonists, you cannot rule them. But uh, even the private control, uh, the uh, private military contractors should not have hundred percent control. They are going to do it in. in in, uh, they are going to do it together with our own uh, members of the armed forces. So it's within them that they work together. They are, they are not want, going to work in isolation. So I think that's part of the way I think we can go about it for now. Because they are becoming more daring, more emboldened, uh, yes, and more audacious in their attack. So uh, I think the, the, the private military contractors, uh, they have the personnel, they have the training, they have the equipment, and uh, they have the will to fight. What more can the parliament do in supporting security agencies and the executive arm in improving security across the country? Well, I know we have done our bit. We have provided everything for the army, although we have to take part of the blame of oversight by relevant committees. And uh, apart from that, I know the leadership of this house organized security summit last year, and we forwarded all our recommendations to Mr. President, but nothing has been done. I think the recommendations are there. They are with the security people. Uh, they know better what we have uh, done. I think that's the only thing we can do as a parliament. Let me cast your mind back to the 8th Assembly. You turned down the responsibility to head a particular committee. Many people believe it is because you do not consider that committee as juicy. Uh, the 8th Assembly, yes, I was made a committee chairman. But uh, as I said the day I objected, Nobody consulted me. I was not told that you are going to be a committee chairman. And if they have sought my opinion, maybe I can accept or reject. But I only found my name and I said, no, me, I don't operate like that. Could it also have been that it was because your candidate lost in that election? No, it has nothing to do with that. Uh, it was an election that was won clearly. So why should I be? I'm a Democrat. I don't have to hold anything after that. So uh, the, the, the ca candidate that won, even, even though I rejected the position, but I still work with him. I still respect the institution, the leadership. We work together without any malice. You have spent 16 years in the parliament. How has it been? Yeah, it's been it's just like any other institution. We have our ups and downs uh, throughout this period. We have uh, some difficult times. We have times that uh, were good. And uh, we made our own contribution based on our ability. So we have done our best. I represent my people. I represented them in six, seven. It as I want. Today we are in 9th Assembly. And uh, I'm sure they are satisfied with my representation. If not, they will have voted me out. So I'm very sure they are satisfied with how I represent them here. This National Assembly is winding down, and a new dispensation will be inaugurated next year. What are your expectations? Uh, the next assembly may not be necessarily the same this way these two assemblies are. There may be no complete dominance of two political parties uh, uh, because of uh, some emerging forces as a third force. We have the Labour, we have the NNPP, and uh, ADC and other parties that are also coming up. So we expect that the House will be more diverse with more number of presentation from different political 
parties. Tell us about your constituency and how well you have represented them. Well, uh, I don't know how to say that. All I know, I've done my best. Uh, you as journalists, you have responsibility as investigative journalists to go to some of these constituencies to interact with the people, interview them. Then you can get an aggregate opinion of what people think about me or how I represented them. Because uh, if I should tell you now, it's just like I'm just uh, pressing myself and I don't know how to do that. Uh, uh, <laughs> so it's left for journalists, investigative journalists, to go either in the open or underground to find out what's the secret, why are they voting for him continuously. What are some policies and plans and programs you believe will impact citizens positively? Well, I think uh, this issue of economy is a global issue. It's not a Nigerian issue, starting with the pandemic, COVID, that uh, really devastated the global economy. And uh, coupled with the fact that now we are facing another war between Russia and Ukraine, which has affected the price of energy, uh, the, the food chain, uh, the food value chain, and many other factors are responsible. And uh, another factor with Nigeria is that Nigeria is an importing country. We hardly export anything apart from oil. So you should not expect that uh, the economy will grow faster like other economies that are industrial in nature. So these are some of the things, and I think we have to change our own attitudes too, of uh, saying that everything we want, exotic things, everything we don't want to produce, but we want to consume in luxury items. So we have to change ourselves. We have to be, the economy has to be export driven. Uh, one credit I'll give this government is in trying to make sure that Nigeria is self-sufficient in rice production. There is, there is no way, you can't have a security in a country of over 2 million, 200 million, and you cannot feed yourself. You are waiting for country, small, small countries to feed you. Countries like Thailand, countries like uh, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, India, to be importing rice, while we have everything that can, we can produce rice. Let me give you an example. In 1980, when the defunct USSR invaded Afghanistan, America, US, and other European countries sanctioned Russia. Yeah, the, Russia was importing, uh, or, or Soviet Union was importing more than 90% of its sweets from US and India. But since after that incident, today there are no more net importers, they export. Ukraine is part of the old Soviet Union and they export. So this, what we should do? Huh? We should be export, exporting most of the things we have. So this is some of the things that can help the economy. But to be dependent on buying everything, importing everything, and you don't export everything, go to the post. I'm the chairman of the committee on ports. I was there last week. Very pathetic. The containers that bring most of these things will either go, about, uh, will go back empty without anything here. Even some of the product we export, the process takes a lot of time. So by the time the products reach there, it will be rejected because there are, there are uh, farm produce that has
time line. And unfortunately, in our own characteristics, because most of our exports have been rejected, we now take it to Ghana and level it, made in Ghana, and send it. But the, the, the people we are sending, they are already aware that this is from Nigeria, where they are using Ghana. So this is something we have to see. Everybody, all hands should be on deck. Why are other countries succeeding? And uh, another area, very pathetic, which I observe, the Nigerian port is a very key sector of the Nigerian economy. But when you go there, you'll be discouraged. What happens? Nigeria is among the very few countries in the world that today they do fiscal inspection for imported goods. Whereas in all older, more than 95% of the countries of the world, they use scanners. They don't use fiscal inspection. You see customs opening the can, they do this, they use touchlight. Something they can, what scanner can do in, in a day, it will take human beings 10 days to do it. That's why we have congestion, we have a lot of issues there. So Nigerians, generally, we have to change our attitude before anybody could change it for us. It's a general attitude with everybody, regardless whether you are in government or you are not in government. Can you tell us about the status of the donkey bill you sponsored? Well, uh, we have transmitted, the, the House of Rights has transmitted that bill for concurrence since December 2029, 2019. There was no concurrence, but uh, another, there is another bill uh, which seeks to water down our bill, our strong response. Uh, it's there in the Senate, before the Senate. They call it a donkey regulation bill. But we know donkey, you cannot regulate the issue of donkey. This is a draft copy of a research challenges and implication of donkey farming. It will be released next week. All the research that has been done worldwide about the donkey, the fecundity rate of the donkey is very, very low. So it cannot multiply a large number. It's a working animal, it's not a production animal. And this animal is facing the danger of extinction. With the rate the Chinese donkey merchants are looking for donkey skin all over the world, in the next 10 years we may not have it. And this is an animal that was recognized by the United Nations as the cheapest, the best, and the most enduring means of transportation to all marginalized people. The people the very poor people of the society that don't even have a mouth. They don't have an organization to fight for their rights. Donkey in China, the leading donkey merchants company posted a profit of $269 million to the detriment of rural people all over the world that uses this animal for their economic activities. In September 2021, after their meeting, they came out with this. It's there in their resolution number nine. It was clearly stated that they should stop the killing of donkeys. And Nigeria is a signatory to that. The implication is to save this animal. People who claim that they can do ranch, donkey ranch, is a lie. I listened to somebody who called himself. Uh, he said uh, is the chairman of Donkey Dealers Association. That three million people will lose their jobs. The donkey in Nigeria are not even up to one million. So how can three million people lose their job? Who are they? Where are they? The workers that will lose their jobs. Eh? The Federal Civil Service has less than one million workers, civil servants. And somebody is saying that 
because he's trading in donkey, he's removing the skin to take it to China to get money. The federal government is not getting anything out of this illicit trade. Huh? So we must stop it, we must save this animal, we must save our rural communities that uses this animal for their well-being, for their economic activities, for their farming activity, for, for transportation, for fetching of water, for taking fertilizer to the farm, for taking farm produce back home and uh, to markets and other places. In some places, even uh, it's, it's used as ambulance. Where you don't have means of transport, somebody is sick, you want to take him to hospital, you use this animal to take him there. And many other places, part of the world, they use it in different things. And this is an animal that can endure, can work for you for 25 to 30 years, continuously. That is all we have time for on the program this week. Watch a repeat broadcast at 7 a.m. on Sunday. And you can also see this episode again on TVC News YouTube channel. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you for watching. I am Tijesu Adiri. See you next time. <laughs>